At the sound of the tone, the official We Like Drinking Time will be 5 o'clock. Commence consumption. This week on episode 320 of the We Like Drinking podcast, we'll be discussing the big launch from Sierra Nevada. Eccles is talking about the secret of the ooze, and we're drinking dry Irish stouts for St. Patty's Day, you knucklehead. So crack open that beer, uncork that wine, and let's get <laughs> drinking! <laughs> Speechless. I'm speechless. Uh, I, I, I feel like I should be drinking green wine. I, I was a, I was about to say something funny, and then I look at you. You know, if you're not watching live every Sunday at 7:30 p.m. Pacific, as you ought to do every Tuesday at WeLikeDrinking.com forward slash show. You're missing the ultimate visual joke. We drop out for a second while Jeff does the intros. We come back and he looks like a leprechaun made a baby with the fat lady at the opera. <laughs> like, that's, about, that's insane. That's about, that's about how good that, that fits. Uh, I stole this from my son. Oh my God. <laughs> As you can Your tell. son's my hero. By how, how well it fits. But yes, at but, the end of the but, show. But, but I, I didn't know there were Viking popes with green <laughs> hair. Well, yeah, in um in uh Fortnite, that's one of the skins you can buy. Right? My end my ends are a little split too, or something. Something's <laughs> going on, stuff's falling apart. Uh all right. So uh cheers, my podcast drinking friends, and welcome happy hour 320 of your favorite award-winning topical beer and wine education podcast focusing on fun. Fun. Um, Men, make sure you never miss another episode of our brand of drinking fun by visiting welikedrinking.com forward slash subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> Jim says Irish opera singers. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm going for. Uh, so <clears throat> we've got, you know, we don't got a lot to do tonight. So uh, <laughs> get ready. Uh, but we'll find out who, who will we be drinking with tonight. And uh yeah, let's wait on what we're drinking. We'll get to that in a bit. So we are joined by our usual panel members. We have our California Sustainable Wine Growing Ambassador and recovering wine blogger, Jeff Solomon. Hey, shalom, everybody. Our commercial brewer and snake wrangler, John Ruyak. Hello. And I am your host and certified specialist of wine, Jeff Eccles. Now this week, oh, it's, it's one of our favorite weeks every month, the week where we get to drink something specific and anymore, it's half voted on by the Patreons, half not. We're sorry, Patreons, but this episode, we're recording this episode on the 9th, March 9th. So it will release on the 12th. So in fact, this is our St. Patrick's Day episode. So obviously, we're drinking dry Irish stouts again. Eh, we kind of like them. So <laughs> I mean... I mean, you get to drink one of the best beers on the planet for this yeah. show. What is yeah. the what is the problem? Nah, not a thing. And whenever we do drink dry Irish stouts, there's really one thing that we're all going to have in our glasses, and that is going to be some form of a Guinness Guinness Guinness, Guinness. Irish Guinness in a finish? stout. <laughs> Guinness in a finish in a pinch. Yeah. Uh, so we've all got the Guinness. They may be different kinds. So let's start. Uh, let's start. Uh, at one o'clock, and go with uh John Ruyak. John, what are you drinking? Oh, I, I picked up uh, a bottle of the ubiquitous Guinness Draft. Mm. Um, you know, and it's got the bullet widget. Or they don't even do the bullet widget in it or anymore. I think they just charge you with whatever. There's not a bullet widget in there anymore. I don't know uh -huh. how they do it. It's magic. I've got the Guinness Drought dra Draft Stout as well in the can, and uh, it. Oh, it okay. does have it does All right. have the and then, and then for backup I've got an extra stout. Oh, okay. extra stout. Yeah, I I too have the Guinness Drouch Stout <laughs> uh in a can. 
Uh, and I'll be pouring that live on air in just a second because, you know, content is king, especially on an audio-only podcast. People are going to love the visual for this. Also, I do have uh, O'Hara's uh, Irish Stout as well um, for later on. I was going to drink this first because I never had it before, but I, I, I want to pour a Guinness so everybody can make fun of me in the uh, chat every Tuesday as you ought to do at 730 Pacific and we like drinking.com forward slash shoe. The O'Hara's is uh 4.3%. So I know it's hecka dry. And then, not. and then for my second, uh, I am going with the American I'm going with what is what they are now calling America's stout. They even got a sham, uh, a, a shamrock on here. Oh. Uh, this is, this is the left hand brewing milk stout nitro. So uh, two nitros I'm going with. I'm excited about that. You know, nothing contract. goes better with like corned beef and cabbage than like milk. <laughs> <laughs> corned beef and cabbage. Fun fact. Uh, that is an American tradition, not a Irish tradition for uh, for St. Patrick's Day. Well, another thing that Americans do uh, better. Even <laughs> 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 uh, corned beef and cabbage. What the fuck's wrong with you? Sorry. Rubens for days. Yeah, whoop, but whoop. just real quick. I mean, there's some other stouts in the uh, Guinness lineup that are pretty good. And I really wanted to get a foreign extra stout, which is a little bit higher in alcohol. Um, they didn't have that. Uh, they also didn't have the Guinness Antwerpen, which is 8%. And it's a lot sweeter. And the 200th anniversary, I don't know if you can find it too often anymore. That one's really a lot drier and roastier than mm. the, the traditional Guinness uh, that we're used to drinking. So, but they're all fine beers. They're all excellently made. They, they uh, are, they are. Now I think, uh, let us know in the chat. I think they probably have, there's like 75 messages in here already. You chatters, you guys are awesome. I think I know, I know JVB has got a Guinness. Uh, I wonder if everybody else, what all y'all are drinking. If you've already said it, I apologize. I missed it because it was going by for so, so fast, but let us know what you're drinking. So let's, let, shall we, tr shall we try the, the Guinness? Yeah. It's hard I mean, for anybody to pay attention when we've got the Irish QAnon shaman on the show. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> And it, the mirror. I'm, just, I'm just waiting for rainbows and pots of gold to start shooting out of those <laughs> horns on his hat. What if it's just a fucking zoom filter and it's actually <laughs> physically not even there? Hey, right? I'm going to pour this Guinness live on air. The Guinness Drouch Stouch. Here we go. So let me open Drouch, the can. Stouch. <laughs> you know. Woo! Woo! The, the, you know, going the with the say, I mean, this is, it's dark. It's dry, it's roasty, but it somehow disappears from the glass very quickly. So quick, so quick. There is that, there is that little, that, oh, look at that. Holy cow. It looks like milk chocolate. So look at that. The cast, nothing the goes better. On that. Nothing goes better with soda bread and <laughs> mustard than milk. <laughs> JVB is going is he's got his mast landing gunner's daughter's milk stout. That's a that's a good one. That sounds like a lot. Oh, uh, Rhett is going with a tactical turtleneck stout from another beer company in New Westminster, BC, Canad Canada. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I feel like I bring this up every year. Uh, do you remember when you were younger, like thinking this yourself or, or like hearing other people say it? It was almost like the Berenstain Bears type of thing where everyone thought it was Berenstain, but it's Berenstain Bears. Like how many people in your life have been like, oh, yeah, I can't drink Guinness. It's too strong. Like it's so weird because it's absolutely not right. It's like five nope. percent. Yeah. If that like if and that. it's not and it's not even like. It's actually low Heavy. calorie. Yeah, yeah. And it's like and it's like nice and clean. Like mm -hmm. it's just it's so weird our impressions. Then again, I remember like being at a party with this one guy. Like somebody pulls out some Heineken. And he's like, "Yo, man, this Heineken is off the hook." That's what I'm talking <laughs> about. This is some craft beer. <laughs> there's there's 126 calories in this bottle of Guinness. 
Mm-hmm. That's like nothing. That's nothing. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's hard to compare. I mean, uh, the most calculations like our double IPA at Lizard Tail clocks in at like 225 calories for a pint. Now, this isn't a pint. This is a, what, 11 point whatever ounces that they put in these things. Mine's um, a pint. Yeah. Yeah, mine's well, a pint. No. Well, 14.9. 14. 14. 14. ounces. Because right. they got to make room for the widget, but this right here, this is a this is a snack pack. This is a Weight Watchers snack pack. That's what this is. <laughs> this is called portion control. You know, this and is- it's got it's it's got that that coffee note to it. But you know, some of some coffee stouts or some of those stouts, the coffee like punches you in the face like like a a good stiff black cup of coffee in the morning. But this is just an undertone of that nutty coffee kind of note. It's well, wonderful. What, what a lot of people forget is that they put a little bit of soured beer in Guinness. There's there's a little bit of lactoed beer mixed in and I think it's like like 3 or 5% of the total volume is a soured beer to give it that snap on the back end. And part of that's because it's not an overly carbonated beer or in this case not yep. carbonated at all, at it's all. just nitro. So you need a little bit of that sharpness to help with the other darker flavors. And will I also, and I also need to say this for like the man bun and beard brigade. Like <laughs> it is so fun to drink a Guinness when you are rocking a mustache. Like it is just next level, like just this visceral, like, you know, it's like a got milk commercial. Every time you take a sip, it's wonderful. Yeah, except for everybody on this panel because there's so much gray in our beard that it really doesn't doesn't show up as it. Yeah, it doesn't you show know, up. Eccles once, <laughs> I don't know if it was on air or off air, Eccles once accused me of dyeing my beard. How <laughs> dare you, sir? I still, every time my beard starts to get long, I go, I'm just waiting for Eccles to try to like claim I'm I'm on yeah, wipe some of the Wipe men. some of the shoe polish out of there. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? I pull this away and there's this big like black <laughs> lipstick rim. <laughs> that would that would not be great. It really wouldn't, but oh Jim. Uh all right. What's wrong with these uh HD cameras. Thanks a lot, patrons. Now you can see the grays in my beard. Ryan Ryan Hannigan show up. He's he's asking if we're drinking dry, dry Irish stouts. We are, Ryan. Yes. The, we're, we're on the Guinness right now. Happy um, St. Paddy's Day, <laughs> you knuckleheads. Jim is... Oh this. God, he's Jim, on fire. I mean, we've been asking Jim to come out to Colorado for a while. He he might just go to California now just to go punch you in the face for saying St. Paddy's Day. He's going to stab me in the heart with a hockey <laughs> stick. But, like, here's the thing. And so for folks who maybe aren't like if you think you're like a an og we like drinker in the uh chat right now let us know who the original fourth panel member is well you know his name's jim but if you put the last name in you win you win a sticker from uh jeff eccles and i'll and i'll send you uh i'll, I'll gift you uh an nba top shot moment how about that oh, i thought you're, oh. you're gonna send them a bunch of like empty guinness draft cans so they could take them to the recycling and maybe yeah, but, make a nickel. but you know this takes me back to i'll call it season uh 0.1 of we like drinking when we did a saint patrick's day episode and and our buddy jim he goes on this long rant about how you're not supposed to be a knucklehead on saint patrick's day but i gotta i gotta say and like you know Jim is very much like Mr. Mr. Like freedom. He's like, you know, get out of my business. But it's like, then don't tell me what the fuck to do. If I want to be a knucklehead, I'm going to be a knucklehead. And I'm sorry, St. Patrick's Day, I'm going to be a knucklehead and I'm going to have a great time. I'm a I'm team knucklehead this year. Team, hashtag what else am team I gonna knucklehead. Do? This will be the second St. Patrick's Day in quarantine, baby. Knucklehead season. <laughs> we talked Brad into it. He is going with a, a an imperial stout from Hot Butcher and Ryan from Focus on the Bill Beer. Focus on the Bill Beer, whatever. He's downing a smoothie seltzer right now because that's the future. <laughs> I just think I burped. 
<laughs> oh, he also adds hashtag sarcasm. Um, all right. You guys, you guys into your second one or you guys got to I'm finish almost, your first I'm, one? I'm, I'm almost, I'm almost. Are you serious? The show just started. What are you talking about? <laughs> all right. This okay. This isn't a competition guy. This all isn't the right. uh, 4th of July. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, like we said, we don't have much of a plan for tonight, so uh, just uh, just be ready for it. But oh, okay, all right. Looks John's like team. looks like Ryan gets an NBA Top Shop from me. Congratulations, <laughs> you now get a um. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll pick I'm... something shitty for you. <laughs> uh, speaking of shitty, it's time for. Wine, beer, spirit, or pop culture reference. This is where I am going to give the crew a term and they need to tell me and you need to tell me inside of your own brain listening at your home right now. Send to me telepathically your answer to this term. Is it a wine term, a beer term, a spirit term, or some sort of pop culture reference? The term this week is... Carlo. Is Carlo a wine, beer, spirit, or pop culture reference? Jeff Eccles. <laughs> uh, it's Carlo. 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 Could you could you spell that for us? C A R. L O W. Carlo. Carlo. Hmm. There's Carlo, so much. Low, 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 so low. I got to say, like 10 minutes ago, uh, Brad saw my hat and said, pop culture, no doubt. So, <laughs> um, and judgy, it's Solomon. He's had a tough day. It's our St. Patrick's Day episode. There's no way he put any effort into coming up with this term before he got in front of his microphone. So it's something in his room right now. So it could be something on his can. There could be something on his can. Maybe maybe it's like it's Carbo, but the top half of the B got scratched off, so he's calling it Carlo. Uh, but I am going to say that Carlo is the manufacturer of the towel that is thrown over Jeff Solomon's shoulder right now. It's a pop culture reference. Wow. This thing's so old, I don't even think it has a tag. If I wanted to read it, it, I don't think I could. Uh, Damn it, I'm already wrong. What what are they saying in the chat here? Uh, Pop culture, pop culture... Uh, <laughs> Rhett says it's a pop cherry it's a reference. Cheech and Chong skin. <laughs> okay. Uh, John Ruyak, Carlo. Well, you know, that's pretty close. You know, a Cheech and Chong skin. At first, I thought it was Carlo with no W. And then, of course, it was Carlo Rossi. And that would be a wine term, right? Um, but I don't know, think anybody here has had a Carlo Rossi wine in the last three decades. Um uh, mm-hmm. And then I was thinking Carlo could be a pop culture reference because Carlo would be the car that J-Lo rode around in the hood. Um, and now I'm thinking, you know, Carlo is... I, you know, it's it's got to be some sort of pop culture reference that has something to do with... NBA NFTs. You know, the All-Star Weekend that just happened. So there's definitely something there. We've got multiple people. JVB, who is JVB, who is very, very, very good at this game. Uh, and Laura are both saying that it's location in Ireland. Well, but what would that make it? I guess uh, JVB says it's pop culture, but yeah, I think I think it's a little. That's, yeah, that's interesting. I do want to uh, backtrack just a little bit. Uh, J Lo grew up in the Bro- in the Bronx. Obviously, you didn't listen to the lyrics of Jenny from the Block, um, <laughs> so she didn't have a car. She rode the subway, is what I'm trying to say. Um, uh, <clears throat> motherfuckers. Uh, Carlo is a location in Ireland. 
It's a location in Ireland where Carlo Brewing Company exists. And the Carlo Brewing Company uh, are the makers of this fine O'Hara's Irish stout. May the luck of the Irish shine upon y'all. Carlo! Don't be fooled by the Carlo that I got. It is in a bottle. No matter where I go, you know where I came from. The Bronx. I had it. I was I was so close. I even picked up the can. Yeah, Said but it's a bottle. Be. And that's that's what threw you off, man. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I guess it could also be a, a beer term. Or did you say a pop culture? I don't even know what you said. I said that was... beer term. Why oh. would I? I said it was the Carlo Brewing Company. All right, all right. I What's thought you may have said pop culture. All right. It's a wine term. Carlo my Rock. my my hat's a little tight. <laughs> <laughs> it does right. seem to be cutting off the circulation to my brain. <laughs> I, I don't know how you sleep at nights. So that thing's so loud. <laughs> <laughs> this is my nightcap. I mean, this is this is how I go nightcap. to bed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you want to come over for a nightcap? This is not what I envisioned <laughs> at all. <laughs> a wink's as good as a nudge, if you know what I mean. Mm, so between the uh, between the 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 left hand, America's stout. And the Guinness Stout, very similar noses. Oh, very similar. I, 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 the left hand's got to be a lot sweeter. And the ABV wise, where's the left hand at? Six percent. Okay. Oh, oh man, right. you know what? I uh, the left hand is very good, but it it's it's not Guinness. There's the, 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 the lactose comes through a little bit more. So it's a little, it's quite a bit heavier than the, than the Guinness. Um, and so the fit, the finish, it's weird because both, both of them have a very long finish, but the lactose really takes over in the finish on, on the left hand, uh, stout. Whereas the Guinness finish is just clean and it's that roasty kind of uh, coffee kind of flavor that, that carries through. So it's like, it's like liquid chocolate covered espresso bean. Yes. Yes. You know, it's interesting. So earlier I actually did pick up another stout. I wanted like an American dry stout. The closest I could get to something like that was the Deschutes obsidian stout, which is like 6.6%. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, even though it's drier than what they would normally make, there's that tackiness that goes along with it. And it's just, it's just, it's different. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Uh, Good job on that, Jeff. Uh, Oh, thank you. Yeah. Good job on the beers, everybody. Uh, Let's get into the meat of the show. It's just, this should be fun. Boo news we discuss interesting noteworthy you know we really just need to take that part out because we've really gotten far 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 away from interesting and noteworthy it's no, just all it's stupid stuff interesting. Right? they're just yeah. not newsworthy that's true or noteworthy. Uh, all right Eccles, or worthy yes how dare you how dare not, I? not interesting not noteworthy all right I guess I won't talk to anybody about the greatest event ever that is happening this very week live on YouTube, 11 a.m. Pacific, which also means 12 noon Mountain Time, which as well means 1 p.m. Central. I'm not sure what it is, Eastern. If you're in Hawaii, you're fucked. I don't know. But live on YouTube this Thursday, March 11th. So pause, pause for a second. If you're listening to the show on the podcast, you missed it. Yeah, it was yesterday. (laughs) Streamed 24 hours ago is what it's going to say on YouTube when you look for this. It's just not the same. You think you're chatting live, not the same, but 
this Thursday for the audio only. Sorry you missed it. I'm not going to give away what happens. This Thursday, Sierra Nevada is releasing, I guess uh, John Ruyak said he got a sneak preview of this. They're releasing their triple IPA, Big Little Thing. It's in their Thing series, right? Like you've had the hazy little thing before. John, you like that beer? It's good, the the Big Little Thing? Yeah, I've had it. We've, we've had it here in New Mexico for a couple of weeks. Well, look at you. So it, must, it must have been a soft open, you know? I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's smooth. It's really smooth. It's that time of year where where folks are releasing their triples. Like I feel like I feel like Russian River, you know, they kind of kick off triple season uh and then they just kind of keep pouring in. I know, you know, Lagunitas times their uh um their Waldo's uh special ale for 420, bro. But yeah, we're like kind of in that that neck of the woods right now. But Sierra Nevada launching big little thing, triple IPA by literally, literally launching a keg. A big little thing IPA from a trebuchet in an attempt to break the Guinness. See, there is a, a St. Patrick's Day thing to break the Guinness World Record for the longest item, uh, 20 kilograms or more, tossed in a trebuchet. If they if it goes further than 253 feet, they will have broken the record. However, they anticipate that they are going to launch this motherfucker in excess of 300 feet. That is one football field from end zone to end zone. You're going to watch, right? Totally. Like, You're gonna they, watch, John, right? Oh, for sure. John, I have to ask, because you just seem like the type of guy who's probably built a catapult before. <laughs> <laughs> I've built a lot of things. I I've never built a catapult, but I've watched a lot of pumpkin chunking on the I was, I was gonna say <laughs> you you either that or you're a guy who watches a lot of pumpkin chunking marathons. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. It, here in New Mexico, just over the Sandia Mountains, in the um, over south of Moriarty, they have it is the largest growing area for Mexican pumpkins, which is what pumpkin pies are made from. And they well, those are the good ones, right? Yeah, yeah. The small big. ones are about this yeah. big, and they freeze them solid. And they have they have pumpkin chunking contests out there. It's been a couple of years since they've done one out there, but it it does happen not too far from here. My biggest now question. they've never they've never launched a keg, and tre I, it's going to be interesting because you know the way trebuchets work is you're basically have this huge weight and it drops and you've got a sling attached to a pivot that just like whew, I just the physics of lifting something that weighs 168 pounds and and chunking it or chucking it for any distance is kind of well cool it's like they've got some videos of them testing it and it is seriously <laughs> impressive to yeah. question, question is this a full keg of big little thing or is this an empty keg. How much does an empty keg weigh? Does an empty an, keg an empty keg over weighs, twenty kilograms? No, an empty keg weighs about thirty-three pounds. Okay, so it a must full be keg full. weighs one hundred and sixty-one, one hundred and sixty-four, depending on the beer. It, and and so, correct me if I'm wrong, John. Into a keg, the beer is flat, so we don't have to worry so much about pressure or. No, no, it's it's carbonated. It's carbonated. It's just when the keg is completely full, that carbonation doesn't have anywhere to go to create any additional pressure. So when you fill a keg completely, you can roll it down a hill and tap it, and it, nothing would really happen so much. Question. 
if I am standing in the target area <laughs> with a sword and it lands on my sword, is is it then gonna release all this carbonation and fly an additional however many well, feet? First, at first it would have to hit the moment. It, the moment of impact would have to be absolutely perfectly perpendicular to the point of the sword or else well you'd be squished at which and, point it would kill you so. at which point it would kill you um so no it's 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 like it's like the fallacy of shooting a bullet into a full propane can it doesn't explode it it doesn't um yeah movies to have it all freaking wrong oh. it's it's like the fallacy this is for all my uh california friends you know Everybody, I and I and I taught Parker early on, and I will uh, I will teach Bennett and uh, Weston as well because everybody who grew up in California had a moment when an elementary school teacher told you that it was against the law to pick a California golden poppy because it's the state flower. Well, guess what, motherfucker? There's no law against picking golden poppies. There's a law against picking plants off of somebody else's property but fucking pick away dude pick a yeah way. There's, there, there's a gazillion california gold poppies I mean, anyway it's a fucking weed man <laughs> well here, here's the thing i mean we previewed the the thing and everybody's seen like those drawbridges where there's this like block of concrete that's the size of a city block that's the counterweight for the drawbridge that kind of they just let it go and it lowers and the bridge goes up well that's what that trebuchet looks like it looks like one of those blocks off of a drawbridge yeah question what if the integrity of the cable holding the sling holding the keg is off like just one of the wires is just a little bit frayed would there be any danger in being anywhere close to the trebuchet uh, if you were to the side, no, it would just snap right off and just fall and, you know, that thing would go up and flip around. I mean, no, if you were standing to the sides, <laughs> I wouldn't stand directly behind it. <clears throat> Question, is it <laughs> unsafe to climb on top of the counterweight and just before they release it, you go and you say it in an ominous voice, going down. <laughs> I'd like to see Steven Tyler do that. <laughs> Any more questions what, to your own trebuchet? story, Jeff Solomon? Question. Okay. Are they going to tap the keg afterwards? And uh, if they break the record, are they going to spray it everywhere like champagne? I don't believe the keg is filled with liquid. What's it but filled with? It's got to be filled with something. With something. something. That it makes it weigh at least twenty leg. kilograms. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't have the information in front of me, but I remember if reading this earlier not. this week, and I think you know maybe it's filled with sand, maybe it's mil- filled with something, um, but I, I, I guess if it was filled with a liquid, it, liquid, it really wouldn't change anything in how it flies because the liquid will all be centrifugally forced to the back of it. But I think that would it slow it down a little bit because of that transfer of liquid. As it was if it, launched, if it's yeah, it, like John saying, if it's filled all the way to the top, it's yeah. Like, but it, I mean, then it would be way too of, heavy, of, right? Of I mean, they want to be as molecules to one side, but I don't. It wouldn't. Uh, but you'd they want to be. want to fill it with something to make it uniform. The the cross sectional weight is even right. throughout the entire length and diameter of the projectile, if, or else if, you will cause an unbalance, and it could whip off into another yeah. direction I think it'd be like it'd be like throwing a screwball or a whip if it, if it travels it like a knuckleball i think that says a lot to yeah. whether or not sierra nevada knows what they're doing when it comes to to brewing properly i think they're probably filling it with like meat i think that's probably <laughs> it's, yeah lady gaga's meat suit yeah yeah you maybe jeff crazy. solid maybe jeff solid maybe they fill it with liquid and then helium so it's lighter just to throw you off on a tangent that's not that's look, not at all how it works i, I, I think <laughs> we're talking about meat filled beer kegs we should move on to the next okay. story let's do that okay <laughs> speaking of meat filled kegs 
Uh, oh, oh, okay. Goose Island Beer Company. You guys are big fans of Goose Island, right? They make some, they make, they may be owned by AB, but may, they make some fantastic beer. I don't are, are drink going back to one stout too often, but some of their Belgian style stuff is pretty good. Some of their one barrel of, age stuff. One of our very early guests was working the barrel program for uh, Goose Island. That's right. So they now it's coming up on Easter. Yeah. They are, you guys have had, what are your thoughts on the Cadbury cream egg? You know, I, I wish it didn't exist. Dish, wish it didn't exist. Okay, Jeff. Here's what I'll say. If you're a like a really little kid, the Cadbury cream egg is scary. Like scary, mm. like sitting yeah. in Santa Claus lap type mm -hmm. of thing. You're like, what the fuck is this thing? And then you get to an age, this time frame where you can appreciate it for really what it is. But I have to say this in all sincerity. If you are over 12 years old mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you look forward mm -hmm. to the Cadbury cream egg, you need to reevaluate your whole situation. Wow. Your life is fucked <laughs> like if Could that's be. something that you get excited about yeah. when you see that vintage commercial with the cadbury buddy guard yeah. burr, 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 and yeah. you get a a, a fucking cadbury boner um <laughs> there's something wrong with you you start looking I, for some potatoes you start looking for potatoes <laughs> i tried a cadbury cream egg probably within like the last five years and I was disgusted. <laughs> right. They are so gross. Congratulations. You have the palate of a 10-year-old if mm. you like Cadbury mm. cream eggs. In, 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 in. This is not the show for you. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Jeff. 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 By what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Oh, my God. I am looking for, is Cadbury owned by, like, Hershey's or something like that? I, I'm looking for whatever conglomerate fucking Eminem Mars to come out with a statement and say, uh, yeah, you know, we've decided that uh, material inside of this foil wrapper is offensive to anybody over 12 years old. So we're just pulled it <laughs> off the shelves like that. Cancel the Cadbury cream egg is what I'm saying. Fucking let Fox News have a field day with it. I think that's only fair. Just fucking get rid of that shit. In, in in five words or less, Jeff Solomon. Tucker Carlson, like, and now they're trying to get rid of Cadbury cream eggs. In five words or less, Jeff Solomon. Because just because yeah. I'm curious, what are your yeah. thoughts on peeps then? Peeps? I've never eaten a fucking peep in my life. <laughs> That's over five words, so, so stop talking. Stupid. Okay. Okay. Well, no, then you. Yummy in my tummy. Then Ooh. you guys. You guys are going to be. I bet you look forward to eating cake on your birthday. You guys are going to be hella excited about the fact that Goose Island Beer Company has teamed up with Cadbury to create a Cadbury cream egg flavored stout. I've g that's too far. Put me on the next train to Chicago. Hold on. Sides. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. It's called. It's the Golden Goo Beerly Cream Stout. And it's sold out within minutes of its online launch in the UK. Is, is this one of those things where Solomon's alter ego somewhere in Canterbury, which is pretty close to Cadbury, tried to buy some and he put it in his cart. And when he went to check out, his cart was empty. <laughs> but, but does it yeah. come like when you hold the bottle to your lips do you get like a little plastic green blade of grass that sticks there and just <laughs> fucking like annoys you for the rest of the day hold on uh i'm i'm, I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit just because it 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 it, it fits right now goose island suggests getting yourself a crab cadbury cream egg and biting the top top off and then licking the goo out 
and then using the remaining chocolate egg as a beer mug for your kid. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's crazy. Like it, 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 it's at what point somebody said, how can we fit goo into our marketing strategy that nobody raised their hand and said, yeah, uh, that's no, <laughs> you know, there's folks out there that like quiver when like people use the word moist. Yes. I think that has become my moist now is like <laughs> Cadbury goo. Like that is so gross. I do have to say, um, similar train of thought is how the, uh, uh, the Venturi wine, uh, aerator was invented. Like somebody just fucking split open a Cadbury egg. They're like, yeah, bro, you pour your wine through this fucking aeration, man. Tastes better than stick a penny in it, bro. But, but to the, uh, to the Cadbury cream egg fans out there, don't worry. No actual Cadbury cream eggs were harmed uh, or used in the production of this brew. Uh, the head brewer used cacao nibs <laughs> and vanilla beans along with lactose to try to recreate the flavor, wait for it, and texture of the candy. Oh, my God. So oh is there going to be a, like a little yellow dot floating <laughs> for the yolk? <laughs> Oh, inside God. your beer glass you're like <laughs> you're drinking it and you feel like these like weird <laughs> chunder chunks like going down your mouth fucking and that like weird like gritty like feeling like gritty like goo sugar like on your teeth and like behind like your back molar and you have to use your like your pinky to fucking scoop that shit out. I mean, there's something is hanging in there and it's just wiggling back and forth after you drink a beer. Yeah, you know how we got that texture, man, is like uh, we just, uh, we got a, a bunch of uh, uh, new mothers to donate forgotten bottles of formula from two week old diaper bags uh uh that's how you get that <laughs> chunkiness that's fucking so gross oh man i like how you're like if you're a listener of this show nobody who listens to this show likes that bullshit nobody <laughs> nobody nobody yeah the chat if is you're a patron <laughs> and you like that i'm giving you your money back <laughs> The the chat is uh the chat does not seem to be on board with the Cadbury cream egg egg, <laughs> egg beer and Good. thank you to Val Caruso uh for for pointing that story out to me initially she she pointed that out thought we'd be big fans oh okay God. here's but here's my question for you guys honestly if somebody I gave you, you knew a, me Val if some <laughs> no I think she brought it up hoping you'd go on a big sugar <laughs> rant um <laughs> would you try it. I think I'd have to respectfully hand it back and say no. <laughs> <laughs> like I'll, I'd, I'd, I'd try it. I in no. in a in a I don't, I don't want wiggly, empty... I don't want wiggly things sticking in between my teeth <laughs> when I drink the beer. Oh, only when like Gallagher makes his comeback tour <laughs> and he lines up a bunch of Cadbury cream eggs and he gets these bottles of Goose Island and he just fucking smashes cream egg after cream egg all over the audience that for some reason is like really stoked to get like covered in, in ooze and then he smashes the bottle on himself and then stabs himself in the heart that's the only reason why i would invest anything into this product is to just see uh, gallagher take his own life why am i laughing at that that's too <laughs> that's wrong <laughs> ladies and gentlemen how, got, how the <laughs> How in the hell did you get from would you try a Cadbury cream egg beer to Gallagher stabbing himself in the Well, it's just, it's really like disgust. It's a disgusting product. I, when and I want to be the boss, I would, I would, if I, organization, somebody pitches that and I want to actually use my trap door button just for, <laughs> 
I've been waiting so long. Fucking dust that shit. That was the time. Yeah. You get excited. Like it's so bad. I would, I would totally try it, but only in a Cadbury cream egg shell. That's because that's probably about all of it. I really want to taste. Okay. I think we've talked enough about that. Hey, send me some uh, Top Shop moments. I'll try. (laughs) Jeff is rad on NBA Top Shop. Moving from apparently the worst uh, possible thing to the best possible thing. We've talked about it a lot over the past few months, but we have this fantastic partnership with Lori over at Dracaena Wine, where you can get her fantastic Cabernet Franc shipped right to your door. Get 5% off the total price by using WLD at checkout. You'll get the award-winning 92-point rated Cabernet Franc that everybody who has tasted it loves. You get 5% off. We get 5% of the sale. And dude, you guys, listeners, viewers are freaking amazing. We are rolling in cash from you all going out and buying this wine. And we love every single one of you for it. Lori's getting the sale. We get the cash. You get great freaking wine in your face hole we like drinking.com forward slash wine buy some wine wld at checkout boom yeah and i will say rhett in the chat just stole my thumb thunder <laughs> cadbury frog i i think all of our money is going into investing in in next easter i'm just saying nobody's mm-hmm, making mm-hmm, any promises mm-hmm, but next mm-hmm. easter Yep. Maybe just maybe. Yep. Cadbury Frank. Cadbury Frank. There we go. There we go. He worked very hard to develop the texture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Only, only if it's bottled by the light of a uh, which moon? Of a of a of a blue blood blue super blood blue, blue, blood blue super moon. Gallagher blood super wolf Gallagher yellow yeah. and white Cadbury goo blood moon. Laura has some coming. <laughs> Uh, Kristen has, Kristen got hers. I think, uh, are the people I've seen it, you guys. Oh, and you can pre-order the Rose and it will ship April 1st. That, that. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. Lori is a stand up human being. If she says she's shipping you something good on April 1st, you can trust her. If anyone on this podcast tells you they're shipping something good to you on April 1st, uh, it's it's a lie. It's going to be a prank. That's just how it's going to be. Okay. <laughs> and no, Dracaena Wines does not make Cadbury Frank. Uh, <laughs> eat Cadbury cream eggs at your own risk. Dracaena oh, Wines, WLD. I'm going to miss that, gonna miss miss that grainy wine. mouthfeel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, 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 I'm excited for this. It's been a while since we got to our newest thing, which is... Oh, you guys can't hear it. So uh, some kind of sound will go in here. And uh, you know what really mashes Solomon's pulp? (laughs) What does? What was I going to yell about? I'm not even looking at the notes. Uh, The garbage disposal does not work like horseshoes and hand grenades. Look, motherfucker. Okay, (laughs) look. Here's the thing. There's a, a certain couple of people in my life that have access to our kitchen sink. It's divided into two sides. And on the left side, there's a beautiful 500 horsepower incinerator garbage disposal. It is amazing. It's amaze balls, dare I say. The greatest garbage disposal ever. And there are multiple people uh, in this very house that have this thing where they put things in the sink near the garbage disposal, but they don't put it in the garbage disposal, let alone, I don't know, fucking run it. A garbage disposal (laughs) is there for you to put stuff in and then turn on the water and it hit the button. You do not get points for being like, oh, I used the garbage disposal for putting shit 
in the sink next to the garbage disposal so somebody else has to sift that shit in and dispose of garbage for you. Look, if you don't know how to run a garbage disposal, ask. I'll teach you. I won't make fun of you for not knowing how to push a button and run some water. (laughs) But it starts with putting things in the thing that you want to work. However, Jeff Solomon, you are telling people the completely wrong way to run a garbage disposal. You put shit, look, you run the water, you put, you turn on the garbage disposal, you put shit in and it goes. You know how it doesn't work? By lining it around where the opening to the garbage disposal is as if it's like Luke Skywalker and a Han Solo trying to escape a Sarlacc pit. Yeah, but you said you put stuff in, and then you said you turn it on, and that's oh, just no, no. disaster. I, uh, that's sorry, just disaster. Whatever. If if you'd have done it that way, I would have been okay. I would have mm. corrected you later. But just just fucking here, I I left I, I left this little piece of chicken on the rim of the garbage disposal. What? So I could see you wanted me to see that you didn't do your fucking job. <laughs> just put it in the garbage disposal. Yes, John. Should no. I be sh- should I be showing Parker uh, YouTube videos of blend tech and seeing if it'll <laughs> it'll blend? Will it, it blend? blend? Will it blend? Like 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 rake handles? No. And um, I am certain Parker would love that. I know everybody listening is begging me for the hit the button, so it's. <laughs> Call time to clean house. And- Last call. <laughs> I did clean Look, house. I'm sorry. I was on dis- fire when I wrote that two weeks ago, and you <laughs> caught me off guard. I apologize. <laughs> time to break out your phones and give you us know a hand. What busts my nards. <laughs> John Ruyak. <laughs> if the folks want to follow us on social media platforms, where can they do so? You can follow us a couple of places, I suppose. You can try us at Twitter. We like drinking one, numeral one. Instagram, we like drinking and the tavern. If you're new to this show, if this episode will let you know, go to we like drinking.com slash tavern. Send us an invite request and we'll say yes, unless we run your your background check and then maybe we won't but most of the times we still say yes joseph has joined us in the chat and he is lighting things up he's talking about green beer day he gets the blend tech joke so joseph is all about it uh jeff solomon if the folks have i i don't know where you want to go with this thoughts on the show garbage disposal techniques cadbury cream eggs peeps where should they go to let us we know? We didn't even talk about peeps. I'm gonna, let me I'm unwrap gonna, them and let uh, them get hard. I gave, I, gave, I gave him five words and he gave me 10. Hot hot take for uh, for Joseph. Green beer is bullshit. <laughs> hey, come at me, bro. Come at me in the Apple podcast reviews. Give me five stars and tell me why I'm wrong. You know I'm right. Here's something that mashes my pulp. I heard somebody getting all excited. They're like, I hope a craft, really nice craft brewery, brewery that shall not be named. I hope that brewery makes some more green beer again this year. If you're a craft brewery and you do a special green brew, get the fuck out of the business, dude. Just, get, just don't. Just don't. Green beer is bullshit. Just like Eccles Zoom hat. That's so weird. <laughs> you know uh, those are Russian bots that now have access to like all your personal information, Eccles. Yeah, I know. It's all okay. right in the shamrock. Right. Uh, if you didn't get from what Jeff Solomon just said, please go leave a review of our show on Apple Podcasts. It yeah, that's what I said. Out. Yeah, and then you got mad at it. It helps the algorithm. <laughs> And visit, if you've done all that and you've ordered some Dracaena wines and you're looking to do more, consider becoming a patron of the show like so many of our viewers and so many of you are out there. We are so close. We are so close to reaching $200 a month. 
it's it's less than ten dollars at this point. So if if we just got just got five people listening to go give us two dollars a show, we'd hit two hundred dollars, which means it really means nothing, but it would make us extremely happy and let us build towards more. We can get yeah. everybody hats next year. Yeah. <laughs> give us give us your hard-earned money and we'll waste it on <laughs> fucking green weird, Viking like hats. cult hats. <laughs> You can also find the show on visit we like drinking.com forward slash pledge to find out more. You can also find the show notes for this episode or all the links to the stories or mentions we had at we like drinking.com slash episodes. I literally can't look at the chat anymore. And uh, oh my God, I'm almost done with the second beer. So close. So, 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 close. so close. That's a deal. JVB says he'll pay you not to buy any more of those hats. <laughs> Sign up, Jim. It's it's all on you now. Otherwise, hats are going to everybody. We uh, like drinking.com forward slash pledge. Forward slash hats. I I love the new I love <laughs> I love the new. I love the new. I love the new. I love the new rotation we got going a couple times a month. It's just us. It feels good, but we've reached the time of the show where I get to say okay people, let's take one last trip around this table and get some final thoughts before we shut up the lights john ruyak you know i this is weird i really hadn't i don't have any off the wall thoughts just popping into my brain but you know i did have one of those take your car mechanic you take your car to the mechanic moments today where you know you take it in and it doesn't you, it you think it doesn't work and then you take it in the mechanic and it does work. Oh, well, we, right. Right. Well, today we had the opposite of that happen. And we had some guy, a boiler operator, come out and show us how to work the boiler at the new brewery. And we're doing good. And I've, I've got water heating up in the big kettle. I got 500 gallons of water heating up. And then the owner of the brewery says, hey, did the boiler guy stop by? I said, yeah, he was here for about three hours, which is probably going to cost him about 750 bucks, right? Um, so he comes in and, you know, I say, watch. And I turn it on and it doesn't fucking work. <laughs> so, he's like, you took notes. I'm like, yeah, these are my notes. You know, I show him all my notes and yeah, yeah, you know, press the button, hit the reset, you know, try it 15, 20 times. Didn't work, you know. So, yeah, yeah, new, new brewery stuff. It'll be fun. Press Jeff Solomon. You know, it'll all be worth it when you do your first batch of uh, green beer next St. Patrick's <laughs> Day when we're still all on lockdown. <laughs> uh, fuck. I love this show, guys. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. And with that, I'll say thanks again for joining us at the We Like Drinking Podcast. Well-